It's no secret that Congressman Brad Sherman is no friend to Bitcoin or the crypto industry. In a most recent hearing with crypto industry experts, Brad Sherman alluded to the fact or the idea that because they are not criminals, right? These crypto leader, uh, these crypto industry leaders, because they are not criminals, that um, they have no business explaining that um, criminals are unknowingly using crypto technology incorrectly. Welcome back, everyone. Lots of people are happy. Bitcoin is pumping. There you go. At the time of this recording, Bitcoin is sitting at 65K. And yeah, of course, we could talk about Gary Gensler's comments about Bitcoin not being a commodity. Yawn. Yes, we know. Um, but I, I really wanted to focus on Brad Sherman's comments because I think it's really important to, to understand um, who Brad's allegiances are are, right? Because at the end of the day, I know that it's difficult for people to accept this, but the people that are paying you the most, you're most likely going to pay attention to what they say. And in this country, um, you can lobby Congress, right? You can essentially pay Congress. You can pay different government officials uh, through the legitimate act of lobbying um, in order to uh, help take um, a a more favorable stance on uh, you know on different topics that that you that that you as an individual feel strongly about or as a corporation feels strongly about. I can tell you uh, for the company that I worked for, I remember um, they used to often send out these notifications emails uh, about how they weren't going to uh, they have no business in swaying your your. Uh, your opinion. Okay. They have no business in swaying your vote, but yet the company that I worked for contributes to a PAC political action committee. And at the same time, right, when it came around time for elections, it just so happened that these PACs started to have meetings and these meetings were focused around understanding why you as an employee should vote a certain way. So for the people who think that um, the money that comes out of these political action committees that goes to these different politicians, if you think for a second that this is not swaying their decisions and their behavior, you have another thing coming. So without further ado, let's uh, let's watch this clip of, of Brad doing mental gymnastics in order to satisfy the people who pay him. Now, none of you have ever been successful criminals. I think I've got that right. You'll interrupt me if I'm wrong. So you don't know what it takes to be a successful criminal. You're here telling me that the criminal, the successful criminals don't understand their business when they decide to use crypto. I would venture that since none of you are successful criminals, uh, you're not really in a position to tell us this. What we see is growing ransomware. Ransomware hit a billion dollars last year the highest ever observed. Increasingly, they're using uh, crypto to do it. And they're getting away with it. And they know their business just as you know your business. But let the record show. None of the crypto companies, none of the people here who make money through crypto is willing to stop doing business with the criminal facilitating mixer operations. I yield back. All right, that was pretty cringe. I think Bill Bartitt's comment hits the nail on the head right here. I'm guessing Sherman would tell pencil manufacturers that they that they shouldn't comment on why pencils should be illegal since they aren't experts on stabbing people in the eye with pencils. And that that I think absolutely illustrates the complete clown clown world take that that Brad Sherman has on this. Um, and I just want to go back for a quick second here. We're going to take a look at followthemoney.org, okay? And we're going to take a look at the industries that are funding Brad Sherman the most. Now, uh, the, the top over here, which shows $3.6 million as of right now, has not been identified, okay? But, but let's take a look over here. Right under that, what do we have? We have general trade unions. Then we have 
real estate. But you see, real estate is kind of tricky. It, it, because it's mixed into finance, insurance, and real estate, of course. Then after that, lawyers and lobbyists. And then take a look. The next three down, all in a row, securities and investments. They gave him almost $400,000, right? $377,000. Okay, accountants gave him another $348,000. And insurance companies gave him another $253,000, okay? Then if we go down a little bit further... We've got credit unions, commercial banks, right? Both of them with a combined total of over $200,000. So when you take a look at Brad's comments, at, at Congressman Brad Sherman's comments towards Bitcoin and the criminality of it, you really start to wonder, is he really looking out for your best interests or is he just doing what he needs to do to continue those contributions. Now, I've spoken about Dr. Ron Paul uh, in the past. I will add a link to his Twitter account. He's not really active on Twitter anymore, but he is an AML KYC expert, okay, out of, out of the UK. And he has thoroughly, thoroughly debunked the actual usefulness of KYC AML to deter crime. Now, we're going to go take a look at the Chainalysis website, okay, uh, because Chainalysis has a report here, and let's take a look, right? How big was crypto crime in 2023, okay? So $24.2 billion received by illicit addresses, okay? But in the grand scheme of things, it's 0.34% of total on-chain transaction volume. Okay, we can also see here in this chart, illicit share of all cryptocurrency transaction volume 2018 to 2023. And we can clearly see here, we had one spike in 2019, and then it's been slowly dropping off. This chart illustrates a completely different picture. If you're reading this right, you're noticing that stable coins, right? Stable coins have now picked up the majority of the volume of the illicit transactions. Now, this is really interesting. And of course, if you think for a second, the authorities aren't happy about this, they are. Because stable coins are a sandbox. Stable coins are centralized, controlled shit coins by corporations. <laughs> okay, so this is exactly what they want, right? This, this totally falls in line with the dystopian monitor state. Brad Sherman, Elizabeth Warren, and the rest of these clowns, um, they're fighting a losing battle. They are absolutely fighting a losing battle. Uh, they believe that their system of coercion and control and power uh, is somehow going to win out over free markets. And I, I gotta, you know, based on what I'm seeing historically, look, Tor Network is still around. They haven't been able to stop the Tor Network. Congress and government officials will always use those feel-good narratives, like thinking of the greater good, doing things for our protection. All of those, all of those things will be used against us in order to create various systems of controls and traps. And this is no different. Anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I will catch you next week.